Molly May, will you come out to play? Your smile takes the edge off of the day. And you're a light that brightens This is Molly May, a bad pos pod and other nice stuff so with me, Molly May. You take me when you go. Yeah, hey there. It's Molly Wally balls and weens. Today's gonna be like a little a little story time. I will cry, <laughs> which is normal. Um, and that's cute for us. But for starters, what I can't take off this week. So I have my period. <laughs> and I bet that you know that I was gonna say that. I fucking like, I don't know why having your period in the summer is harder. It is. I mean, I guess now that I think of it, I can name like three reasons off the top of my head why having your period in the summer is harder. There's swimsuits and shorts and light, gentle linen fabrics and, you know, whatever. Anyway, I'm not the woman that's like, my period is lovely and beautiful. You've been on this ride. You know, my period is a temperamental little bitch. It's probably my fault the way that I talk to her. I should respect her more. And yeah, she's given me a lot of trouble in the past, but I've really fallen in love with Nick's underwear. K-N-I-X is the brand. This is not an ad, FYI. This <laughs> When, <laughs> we just caught my phrasing, when I get an ad, you fuckers are going to know because I'm going to turn that ad voice up so hard. I'm going to be like, hi, have you ever tried this brand? It's great for this. And then back to the show. So the brand is NYX. <laughs> they're, um, they're period underwear. And um, I like to wear them as a backup. But I also like them so much that I wear them when I don't have my period. And they're just like an extra crotch padding that you wash. So it's easy. Crotch padding. I learned recently that Johnny hates the word crotch. I'm so, Johnny, I'm so sorry. They have extra padding in the, um, the gusset. I can't, I can't handle the gusset. It's the crotch. I'll, I'll get you a case of bush light for enduring all the crotch. Um, love you so much. Um, but these underwear come in a variety of cuts and they fit my butt and my bell. You know, oftentimes when I buy underwear, the fit doesn't take into account the folds of my bell. And I just, I really love these guys and you know, they keep my sheets clean at night. Really. They're good. My song of the week. <laughs> so I was positive that this was going to be me and Johnny's new karaoke duet jam. You know, like when it's all clean and nice and safe to go out into the world and karaoke again. Like I can't imagine going somewhere right now and doing karaoke and feeling comfortable sharing a mic. Sorry if that triggered anyone. I'm just dreaming. I think that I, for me personally, if I go and do karaoke, I'll have to bring my own. I'll be like, can, I, can I connect to the Bluetooth to sing Little River Band's Lady? <laughs> That's the song of the week. And it, so I was really excited about the song and I shared it with my sister. And I was like, ooh, listen to this. You know this song. This is me and Johnny's new karaoke duet. She's like, Molly, what the fuck? No. Crowd killer. No. <laughs> just like that. And she's right. Uh, she's absolutely right. It's, you know, it just, it hits different when you're sitting in the car. Thank fucking God for sisters. <laughs> Be in front of a fucking crowd asking to plug in my, you know, plug in your Bluetooth, but you understand. So I could sing this crowd killer. It'd be awful. I really got to go to a good sister. I got a good one. Um, so yeah, lady, little river band. Don't sing at karaoke, uh, but try it in the car maybe sometime. <laughs> uh, what brought me joy this week? God, okay. This week, 
I had the honor of modeling Dallas Dawes's inclusive sizing line. And it was awesome. And it was the first time that I modeled um, like extensively, like a lot of pieces of clothes, like a lot. <laughs> it's, what, it's what they call it, a fucking line. Um, and it was awesome. And it, you know, a bummer to have to do it in Pandyland. Um, Cause my favorite thing about shoots is hair and makeup and high fives. Um, but this was, you know, a lovely pivot that she made. And I was like, hell yeah, I'll do my own hair. I haven't done it in six months, but I'll fucking, yeah, I'm going to put a beach wave in it for you. <laughs> hell yeah. And I just, I really do love her line. Um, everything that she makes is so meticulously detailed at the same time. It's like so simple. Like she makes it look so fucking easy. And she uses what to me I consider like pure like fucking luxury fabrics. But like you can also wash and dry every piece in her line and it's just wild to me. She has like a silk flowy dress, camis, fucking button ups. Like she makes her own fucking button ups. Oh, they're just so good. Pleated pants. Oh my she made a trench. She made a trench coat. Uh, but I really think my favorites of all of it are the linen pieces. So she made a pair of shorts. Like, I squealed when I first put these on. I haven't worn shorts in forever. And, like, I clapped my hand like a little tiny baby. Like, I'm wearing shorts. I'm wearing shorts. Real good. Linen shorts. Who knew I needed those? Um, her latest line is called Tear, um, and it's launching end of this summer, and I'm so fucking excited for her. We started working together like over a year ago, and it just started with, she just basically like interviewed me on what I like out of a wardrobe and how as a fat woman, I want my clothes to fit. And we regularly... Regu regularly <laughs> cool we regularly met up after that and I tried on her pinned patterns out of muslin and then this weekend we shot the entire fucking line and I'm just like to see it from concept to finish and to like be a part of that process oh it was so rad and I'm just so proud of her. It's so magical. It's sustainable. It's ethical. I just feel like I feel that there's like this momentum happening, right? Like we've talked about how hard it is to shop small and local and sustainable as fat women. And I'm witnessing the shift around me. People want to make clothes that fit people and I'm excited that it's happening I'm, I'm ecstatic to be a part of it and if you're a designer that happens to be listening to this I'm super fucking excited to offer my services like let's keep this momentum going so to Dallas Dawes thank you to Ripley Radar thank you to Wild Isles Swim, thank you. I'm excited to watch your continued success. And I'm excited to rattle off a shit ton more names to that list. So without further ado, story time. This is one of the reasons that um, kind of those, my three favorite things of the week are so important to me um, because it kind of, I strive hard to be a positive person, right? And when I can center myself in these moments of gratitude and remembering why I'm here, 
and why I'm sharing my voice, it it's um it's a nice reminder that it's not all shit. <laughs> um, and it it gives me confidence, and that's you know kind of what I talk about my tool belt of gratitudes a lot, and that those three things at the beginning of each episode, especially when I'm going to talk about real hard shit are a lovely little practice, not only of routine, but centering myself in gratitude. So I was just going to start into the story time. And even after, you know, sharing those three things of the week, I already feel more fortified that I can, deliver what I'm about to say without, you know, just like jumping right in. Like, so today's going to be hard and I'm going to cry. Um, yeah. So let's do it. A reminder to do your gratitudes because they make you feel nice. So story time. I have put off this episode for a year. I have tried to shuck it from my psyche and I have tried to be above it. But if I've learned anything through therapy is that I have to go through it to heal. Um, I tend to stuff my emotions. I stuff my feelings. I stuff my voice. And then, you know, I (laughs) go back and revisit it decades later. So so here we are. Why not do it here with you? Last year, I was just so fucking honored to be interviewed and photographed for a prestigious Minnesota publication alongside other women in the body positivity and fat liberation space women who are making moves and changing the game in inclusivity for all bodies. It was also the first write-up and public acknowledgement of the podcast. So like, yeah, I was fucking psyched. Like, people listen to this, what the fuck? Um, And there was also, you know, a legit like in-studio photo shoot. And you know how hard we love that. The article was gorgeous. It was a celebration of our community as well as a bomb-ass highlight of the small businesses that are true fucking crusaders for fat bodies in Minnesota. It was awesome. It was really fucking awesome. And then I read the comments. (laughs) I was tagged on Facebook by a past coworker who was hyped and was just like, oh my God, Molly, it's you. And it was the first moment that I had seen it shared on Facebook. Oh my God, fuck Facebook. What is it about Facebook that just lets people act like losers? We'll get there. Um, thank God I was already in the bathtub. Uh, because there were comments. Comments that like hit the whole body. Comments like, um, so you remember in middle school that feeling that you would feel in your whole body right before you are going to get in a fight with your best friend? Like either you found out she said something about you or back and forth X, Y, Z, and it's like your first moment of confrontation. I fucking hated that feeling. Or like in high school, when you learned there, you know, was an embarrassing rumor going around about you and you just like, it's your whole body. Or the feeling of like right before you almost get into a car accident, but you don't. And then it like radiates down into your heels that was this that was this feeling and it just kept rolling it has taken me a year to share this experience because these people made me feel ashamed they took my light 
this article features photographs of fat, smiling, happy women sharing about the joys of their life. And people on the internet didn't see that. And what fucking kills me is, like, especially on Facebook, I can see the faces and the names of these comments. <laughs> and I'm going to, um, it's important to the story that I share the specifics of these comments. And this is not to cause hurt or pain, but this is to educate on two sides of this. It is to educate the perpetrators of these comments or like-minded humans of these comments to a moment of empathy, hopefully. <laughs> and it is also a moment of, hopefully, <laughs> education for fat women who hear these comments daily to know that you are not alone and the feelings that you feel are valid and I fucking, I feel you and you don't need to let people dim your light because of their insecurities. <sighs> Some of these comments are as follows. This is verbatim. That looks so unhealthy, LOL. You can run, but you can't hide. Obesity is suicide. Obesity is a killer, no matter how much positivity we give it. Nature isn't woke. Oh, Lord, spare us the sight of this celebration of unhealthy dysfunction. Disgusting. Another reason this state is an embarrassment. Doctors have coined a name for that. Diabesity. Death by diabetes is a slow and painful one over a many year period. They are killing themselves and you're encouraging them. This is one of the reasons I'm against universal health care. What a weird euphemism for denial. Nasty. Not fooling anyone, they are miserable. And more, more from doctors, more from women, more from fucking men who don't know me, who don't know us. And the reason it's important for me to share some of those comments is if you listen to this pod, you, you do know me. You do know the fat community. You have fat women in your life. And these comments are real and they fucking cut. To read that I am dying a slow and painful death. To read that I'm to blame that some fucking dude's medical premiums are high. To read that my self-worth is zero and that my self-respect is fake that's real fucking shit for these people to take a fucking glance at my photo oh my god it was such a good photo i was wearing a swimsuit as an outfit like of course I, of course i was <laughs> But for people to glance at this photo and deduce me as such a fucking problem in their lives, when this article was centered around how fat people are creating joy and acceptance was like getting a brick fucking thrown at my guts. And before I get just like completely negative and off course, also know that there were some real deal angels going in and fighting these trolls with, you know, health at every size facts and just fucking bless them. Look for the helpers. I stayed out of that. I stayed out of responding. That's for the real strong, like 
Chrissy Teigen types. <laughs> um, I was afraid of what would happen if I stuck up for myself. There was like a an invisible wall because my photo was there, but I hadn't yet participated. I hadn't yet made myself available to them. But I did because I was there because I was reading it. I was afraid of what would happen if I stuck up for myself. I turned to my buddies. You know, I have a group of girlfriends that, you know, did exactly what I needed and started dishing shit and like, well, this is on Facebook. I can see exactly who these people are. Blech. Also, while well being like, you keep fucking going. And reading this shit made me want to hide. I was completely dimmed. For weeks, I wanted to stop. I wanted to not post on Instagram. I was like, maybe I shouldn't do this pod. Maybe I'm a fake. And this was my old wiring coming back into play. Like these comments had reminded my old demons of like, well, what voice does she have? Her worth is null. She's just fat. She's gross. Who gives a fuck? And then my thoughts went to, well, I have a podcast, so I'm inviting myself to this criticism. No, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> because there is a discourse on the internet does not mean you get to throw the fucking rule book out of human decency. I want Jim and Leah and Corey and Dr. Boleyn and the rest of these fucking losers to hear this. No, I am human. I am fat. I have good days and I have bad days. I don't hate my body. I also don't totally love it yet. Thanks for fucking sending me back 10 paces. <laughs> my existence offends you. And your hate offends me. And this is where I need to leave it. You've been heard, if that's what you wanted. And it's a year later, and I just need to release the comments and that pull of not being enough out of my heart. It doesn't work anymore. And I'm positive that there are going to be many more moments like this one because sticking up for my body is truly just beginning. It's always been easy for me to not take up space. I will not be thrown out of consideration, tossed aside, or fucking belittled for my dress size. And I, if you're listening to this, I won't. I'll try not to let you be belittled either. And giving you fucking advice now that goes against everything that you've ever heard. I urge you to read the comments. And use your voice. And stand within the body you love, within the body that you're trying to love. Or even stand beside the bodies that you love. And also know that you don't have to be fucking strong all the time. Being strong is not a prerequisite to wearing a swimsuit. So hit me up. You know where to find me. Lean on me. Shitty days are fucking shitty. And we can troll the haters together. I'm Molly Mae, and I'm fucking fat. I love you so much. Smoochie. And if you got this far in the pod, I'm 
impressed as fuck and really grateful to have you listening. Uh, if you want to know more information about me or the show, check out the show page on matriarchdm.com where we host all of the What I Can't Take Off, our progressive Spotify playlist from the songs of the week, and uh, obviously the reminder of who to follow for the week, all in a nice little fucking matriarch digital media bow. Theme song is Molly May by Ben Karen. I'll, I'll never get over saying that. It's so good, right? Uh, thanks for listening. You're so cute.